The cooling system on your M5X swap is very important. Let's see what you need. Welcome to episode 3 of our 6 part E30 M5X swap guide. If you haven't seen the first video, click the link right here and check that out. In this video we will be covering your radiator choices, radiator hose choices, your cooling fan, and your temp switch. Let's get into it. Just so you guys know, the cooling items that I recommend today have been tested in my car in 30 plus degree weather for hours on end. I feel really confident with my cooling system and I know it works great. So starting with the Rad, you can really use whatever you want, either from E30 or E36 chassis. I would strongly recommend finding one where there's a port in the side so that you can put a fan temp switch in there. Uh, in my case, I pulled one from a E36 four cylinder car. I really like this one because it has an expansion tank built into the side of it so it cleans up the look of the engine bay as well as it has a port on the side and you can use the stock E30 rad mounting pieces to mount this one in. For radiator hoses, you can use this one from Napa, part number is right here as well as in the description. It's about $20 and it can be used for your upper and your lower with just a little bit of trimming. I've also heard of some people using a M50 upper rad hose for the upper rad hose in the E30 application. Um, for my setup, I used the Napa hose for my lower. It was really easy, just cut it to size. And for my upper, I found this perfect one in this random bin of rad hoses. So I'm sorry I don't have the part number for it, um, but these Napa ones should work perfect for you. For cooling fans, I've heard a lot of people use the stock belt-driven cooling fan. My concern with this is how close the engine is to the rad, if you're going to have enough space to fit it in there, or if you can fit it in there, how much space you have between the fan and the rad. As well as with those stock fans, I've heard some stories about them um, blowing up and just causing a bunch of damage. Um, so I would just really recommend going with a 12 inch electric fan. You can mount it in the pusher position, so on the other side of the rad. And you can get as fancy as you want with the mounting. Honestly, I really like the radiator zip ties. They're pretty simple and quite effective. For the coolant fan switch, it goes into the side of your radiator and it will turn on the fan when it senses a predetermined coolant temperature. In my car, I didn't care about high speed, low speed, so I connected the black green and black gray together. Then I wired 12 volt accessory directly to the fan, then the ground side of the fan to one side of the switch, and the other side of the switch to a good ground. This way, when the switch gets hot, it connects the ground wire from the fan to ground. Also, while the engine is out of the car, I would recommend just changing the thermostat and the water pump. It'll just give you that peace of mind that your whole cooling system is fresh and new and reliable. And that's it for the cooling system. It's pretty straightforward. Um, check out our next video where we will cover how to relocate the brake booster. If you have any other questions, feel free to comment below or message us on social media.